no matter how much talent you have on your roster as an NFL team or you're going to have it all or a lot of it stems from how you draft. And right now we were just asked or we were asked uh, a little bit ago by a viewer to grade the Las Vegas Raiders 2019 draft class. And got to be honest with you, this is one of the better draft class classes ugh, that I've seen in a while. Uh, and I, I'm, I'm accustomed to, you know, the Vikings that have had a, a lot of good drafts in the past and uh, looking at a lot of teams that are able to get, uh, other than the Vikings, that are able to get steals. And, you know, this particular draft class by the Raiders was was a very big draft class. Um, now, I do have to, you know, three first-round picks, you would hope that they would get a lot of um, return on uh, their investment, and they have, uh, and you know, in, in a lot of different ways. Not just on the first-round draft picks, though. So uh, this is, like I said, this is one of the better draft picks or draft classes, excuse Excuse me that I have seen uh, in recent years and I think that the Raiders deserve a lot of credit for this because I do think uh, you know it does need to be said so um, you know like we said your future relies on how you draft and I think Mike Mayock did a great job in this particular draft now caveat uh, first of all uh, we are sorry that it is very hard to read for our specific grades um, but we will go through these one by one and uh, I'm, I'm sorry next time we'll do this on Excel with our very mediocre Excel skills um, but you do see here you know Cleveland Farrell we have him at a C plus um, we're sorry these don't things exactly line up but it is how it is uh, C plus now I know there's a lot of fans that want to give this man a lot of hate and I get it you have eight sacks and what 42 career games as a Raider that is not great absolutely not great and I get the frustration absolutely however I do think it's worth mentioning that I think in this particular 41 career games rather excuse me uh, I do think it's worth mentioning that it really does come down to the fact that a lot of times you just take a shot on a player and hope it you know it, it works out for the better now my, to my recollection uh, he was coming off a dramatic combine I'm talking like one of the most uh, like athletic freaks there are uh or at least he showed like it in the combine like he had the size at 6'5 265 he had the speed uh was just coming off an uh, 11 and a half sack season with the clemson t uh with clemson 11 and a half like we said uh 20 tackles for loss uh and like he just he looked every bit of the part so we totally get you know having him getting him in the fourth uh with the fourth overall pick here um and like we said you, it does hurt you a little bit uh now the reason i'm giving him a c plus grade is uh obviously he didn't exactly pan out like you thought but uh i'm giving him a better overall grade because i still think there's some you know there's some salvage ability here now whether that is um whether that is with the Raiders, I don't know. And I'm going to be perfectly honest. Now, he might catch on with another team, and he might do a whole lot better there. I don't know that, to be perfectly honest. But I think, you know, to just write a guy off after one year is just not its not feasible. you got to be able to look at the entire body, uh, embodiment of work. We've seen it around the NFL, guys that have done a good job of coming out and uh, and, and revitalizing their careers. And, and I think that needs to be said um, that, you know, y yes, they could have gotten guys like Devin White or, uh, you know, Josh Allen at, at linebacker as well. Um, another uh, mind that comes to my, her name comes to my mind, Devin Bush Jr. Uh, you know, a lot of defensive players, Christian Wilkins, a D tackle. I think he's coming on strong as of late. Uh, but Brian Burns was another route you could have gone here. Uh, he's had a really good uh, career with the Panthers. Uh, and obviously at that point, Nick Bosa was off the board. So, I mean, come on, give give the people a little bit of a break. Montez Sweat they could have probably got, but I think he was a little too high there. So overall, uh, I get as to why they uh, they took Farrell here. Uh, it was actually kind of a shock. Uh uh, man, who, I can't remember who they were all mocking him at that point. I think it was a TJ Hawkinson, somebody. I can't remember who they were all, uh, who the draft analysts were mocking to them. But I will say, you know, I, I, I think there needs to be kind of a little bit of a leniency here. You can't just write off a guy after one year. But I do think moving forward, I think he's going to be a good player for them. Uh, well, a good player for a team. I think he does need a change of scenery just because um, it is it's hard to come back from that uh, with the same fan base and uh, you know wish him nothing but the best. And I think he could actually revitalize his career. You never know, right? Right, right coach, right system. You just never know. Uh, Josh Jacobs clearly in here. I, we don't even need to spend a whole lot of time on this pick. I mean, uh, obviously, uh, for the first, what, couple of years of his NFL career, had a, a couple of back-to-back 1,000-yard -back seasons. Uh, this year, not so much. He's been kind of injured, uh, but he has been the heartbeat of that uh, Raiders run game in a lot of cases. Can catch the football very well. Had a career high of 54 catches this year for 348 yards. 3,000 total rushing yards in his career with the Raiders. That is not updated. Uh, I don't know why. Anyway. Jonathan Abram, also an A here. Uh, I think you got you get a guy in Jonathan Abram that, you know, 
I totally get the fact that uh, not all safeties are built the same and not all sa and, and everybody's built different. Totally understand it. But Jonathan Abram can bring the boom. Uh, I know that a lot of people probably would ca give this guy, you know, probably B or B plus. But I think he, he has improved a lot this year and he has been a major reason as to why the defense has been making a lot more plays. And, uh, you know, right now currently with the Raiders this season, he has a 57.1 uh, PFF grade, has a pick this year. Um and I think he's been, and the thing is, not a lot of people know this. He's been targeted the most times in the NFL. I, I think, according to safeties, according to PFF, has been targeted the most time as a safety, according to PFF. Excuse me, has allowed 54 catches, also first in the NFL. But you have seen a guy that has taken a step in year three uh, that I think can move on. Uh, I just really like Jonathan Abram. I think he's going to be a great safety moving forward. You just, you don't, you don't bank on the first, you know, the first couple of years. You bank on the longevity and how these guys in, continue to improve. And he's been a guy that has has. Uh, very much improved. Trev Trayvon Mullen gave him a B here. Now, overall, Trayvon Mullen, I, I wouldn't say he's been a disappointment. This year, he's a 55.3 PFF grade, um, has been targeted 85 times and allowed 54 catches, two interceptions on the year. Um, you know, over the last couple of years, actually, that's uh, 2021. I'm, that was last season. I'm sorry. I was on the wrong the tab here that I had. Uh, this year, 61.7 PFF grade, uh, one pick, 15 catches allowed uh, out of 22 targets, 17 total tackles. Um, last year, like we said, it was with some of those stats, get your facts right, Colton. Um, 53 total tackles, two picks. Um, you like what you saw? I think at corner is one of the hardest. Like, I know quarterback is the hardest, but come on. Corner is one of the hardest positions to play in the NFL. Rookie year had a 62.5 PFF grade. Interception, uh, 41 catches allowed on 70 targets and 46 total are solo tackles that is excuse me so overall you see a guy that does have a lot of talent i think you're going to see a guy that continues to shut down corners um as he continues to move on now i mean this was a what was this this was a huge uh clemson heavy class for the raiders um but overall Gave him a B. Well, I like to see what you uh, you get to continue to get out of him uh, and see what he can do. Max Crosby, Mad Max as they call him, uh, I believe, from what my recollection. Uh, I this is such uh, this guy has been a animal a, a an animal whatever that that kind of stuff always messed with me but max crosby has been a bad man uh, ever since he stepped on the field and gotten his opportunities uh eight sacks this year 25 total career sacks on the year and not a lot of people know this but he is one of the top graded uh defense events according to pff right now 91.5 overall pff grade uh, and you really just like what he does in terms of a leadership perspective seven uh excuse me uh what was it 10 sacks last year something like that uh you just like i said you like what you get here in terms of value um you know and i think overall he's a player that you just uh you know coming out of eastern michigan you kind of wonder what you were going to get but he has been a total leader seven sacks last year uh, and then 10 sacks as rookie year so you know if that's any indication 10 sacks as a rookie seven and eight these last couple of years you know he's just been a big reason as to why they've been so successful and you got a lot of love um and you got a leader you absolutely have a leader in a guy like max cross max crosby excuse me over the next couple of seasons Isaiah Johnson, from my recollection and my research, uh, I don't think he made it uh, very long with the Raiders. I gave it a, a C because you got to take a flyer. You got to you got to take a shot at some of these corners that you think can make a difference. And didn't exactly pan out with Isaiah Johnson, but that's fine. Foster Moreau, tight end out of LSU, making plays. Uh, honestly. I gave the I, I gave this um, pick an A because you had Darren Waller at tight end, uh, and I felt like okay at first I was like why would you draft a tight end? But Foster Moreau this year has really come on strong uh, and done a, done a lot of good things for the Raiders. When Darren Waller has been down, he has easily stepped up six four two fifty. Uh, 30 catches, 373 yards, and three touchdowns. Uh, enjoying a career year, career year excuse me, uh, this year with uh, Darren Waller uh, experiencing some injuries, but he stepped up majorly and been a big part uh, of the passing game at times. And I think he's a, uh, you know, he's a target that uh, in the playoffs I think they, they'll uh, see. Maybe you can get a mismatch, uh, uh, especially with some of the the talent that the Raiders have on the outside. And plus Darren Waller, I believe they'll have him back. So uh, that's definitely a great uh, tight end punch right there with Darren Waller and Foster Moreau. I gave it. A because he has really had a strong year this year. Hunter Renfro, easy A. Easy A. A uh, guy that has, in my mind, shown that he's one of the most underrated wide receivers in the entire NFL and continues to bring it and get better every single year. And it's evidenced by his stats. Uh, 49 catches, 605 yards, four teddies as a, as a, I want to say freshman. What am I doing? As a first year pro, uh, second year came back 56, 6, 56, and 2. This year, Big jump. Doubled everything, basically. Basically. Uh, 103 catches, 1,038 yards, and nine touchdowns. Just one of those guys that he's a go-to. He's absolutely a security blanket for Derek Carr in this offense. Uh, he's just a big part of their success, um, and he does a lot of great things. Uh, 
Uh, and I think he's going to continue to be a go-to for uh, for Derek Carr moving forward. And I think he's honestly, when it's all said and done, he could be a, a Raider all-time great because, I mean, he just brings so much uh, for that offense. Uh, Quentin Bell here, safety. Uh, I gave it, or DF, DN, excuse me, gave him a, a C. Wasn't, uh, you know, again, these are guys, you seventh-round picks, you know, you, they're going to be projects they're going to be guys that you're just kind of wondering what you can get out of them uh and so i just gave it a c i, I tend not to really give low grades for guys that don't pan out in later rounds because i mean it's it's rough uh it, it really is rough and so that's our grade for the uh, 2019 draft class of the las vegas raiders let, let us know what you guys think um again Cle- uh, cleveland Farrell, i'm probably gonna get some hate on that one that that's fine uh like i said i just think there's a lot of potential there uh, and a lot of ability for the raiders to be able to come out and uh well excuse me cleveland Farrell specifically not not, not with the raiders again uh, i think he could salvage his career somewhere he's got the s- size he's got the length he's got the speed he's got everything you need if he's in the right system who knows he could i think he could definitely salvage his career but let's know what you guys think about those grades uh leave a like and a comment it helps people find the show we greatly appreciate all the support that we've gotten and continue to get you guys are all truthfully awesome and we love every single one of you check out our website at the sports podcast.com also in the description down below you'll find all of our social media platforms so give us a like and a follow there uh give us a listen and sub on itunes and if you have anything else you'd like us to cover make sure you send us an email at the sports bp at yahoo.com or put in the comment section down below and we'd love to cover it but let us know what you guys think about our grading of the las vegas raiders 2019 draft class